In the previous video we looked at what the average kinetic energy was of an ideal gas particle and we're going to continue on in this video and derive what the average velocity is of a gas particle according to the kinetic theory of gases. So we have our result from the previous video that the average kinetic energy epsilon was equal to one half mass times the average square velocity by definition. And then we calculated that that value was equal to three times pressure times volume divided by two times the number of particles. So what we have right now is that pressure times volume is one third number of particles times their mass times their average square velocity. Um, but this uh, average kinetic energy value we can get at from another way. And in fact, from the statistical mechanics playlist, which is far earlier on in thermodynamics, we learned that the average total energy of a part of a monatomic gas, or you can view as just a single gas particle, translating throughout three dimensions, that that value um, so the potential energy of it was zero for an ideal gas. So all of the total energy is kinetic. So that kinetic energy, its average value was three halves times the Boltzmann constant times temperature. So from STEPMEC, the average kinetic energy of an ideal gas particle is three halves KBT. And from the kinetic theory of gases, we have that um, that value is going to equal three times pressure times volume over two times number of particles. Okay, but we can take um, some of these equations and then set them equal to each other. So we're gonna have our one half m average u squared. It's gonna equal three halves kBT. All right, and then we can uh, change these in terms of the mass and Boltzmann constant. Those are a little less convenient to work with than the macroscopic gas constant and the molar mass of the gas. But conveniently for us, um, our gas constant R is equal to Avogadro's number times the Boltzmann constant. And similarly, molar mass is equal to the mass of an individual particle times Avogadro's number. Molar mass is just how much mass is there in Avogadro's number of that particle. So um, these, this Avogadro's number here is going to appear on both sides. We're going to have one half NAM, or we're going to have we're going to have one half NAM on this side. We're going to have three halves NAKBT on this side. So we can actually instead just use um, the gas constant and molar mass. So let's rewrite this equation with those values there. So we're going to have one half mass is going to go to molar mass times average velocity squared equals three halves. And then Boltzmann constant is going to go to gas constant because each of these Avogadro's numbers canceled three halves RT. Okay, and we can cancel out on the bottom here this half value. So we have <clears throat> that the average uh, velocity squared of a gas particle is going to be three times gas constant times temperature divided by molar mass. Okay, so what does this what does this tell us that was consistent with our intuition about uh, gases? thus far from thermodynamics. It shows us that for for an ideal gas that the kinetic energy is proportional to temperature. So the the factor which controls the kinetic energy of a gas is going to be temperature. Um, it's, also, it's also going to be controlled by molar mass as well. But it's directly proportional to temperature. So at zero Kelvin, there is no kinetic energy that is consistent with our intuition. And thus the total energy is also proportional to the kinetic energy because in the, in the ideal gas, the potential energy is zero. So the only thing, once you've specified the mass of the particle, the only thing affecting the energy of an ideal gas is its temperature. 
Okay, and now we're going to take this value of the average square velocity and we're going to define a new quantity called the root mean squared velocity. Root mean square velocity. Am I going to fit on the page? Yes. Okay, and this URMS is going to be defined as the square root of the average square velocity. So this isn't going to quite be equal to the average velocity, but it's going to be fairly close. So it's this, just the square root of the average of the square, which is different than just taking the average and then squaring it. Okay, so um, this URMS, which is defined to be uh, this value to the square root, so if we take our value here and then we square root that, what we have is that the root mean square velocity for an ideal gas is going to be three times RT over molar mass square root. Okay, so that is our RMS velocity for an ideal gas. That's one measure of its average velocity and if we go ahead and do this calculation for, say, nitrogen gas at 298 Kelvin at 25 Celsius, so the URMS for N2 gas is going to equal, we have 3 times gas constant is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times 298 Kelvin. Okay, and then we have uh, on our molar mass here. We need to make we need to make very uh, we need to be cautious that we use the proper units in this because we're taking a square root here. The units we should be left with are meters per second. So if we cancel out units here, we'll see is that this Kelvin and that Kelvin cancel. So we have uh, joules per mole left out here. So our molar mass is already in per mole, but we need to use the correct unit within joules. So I'm just going to show you why we're going to use the unit we're going to use. So if we use molar mass in kilograms per mole, then that's going to be on the denominator of joules per mole. So the per mole values are going to cancel. And that's going to give us a joule per kilogram, which if you remember, a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared that's one joule times one over kilograms so if we so we're dividing off the kilograms there because they cancel so what you're left with is meters squared per second squared which then when you take the square root is going to give you meters per second so what you need to do is give the molar mass in kilograms per mole so I'll write that here that M is in kilograms per mole and if it's not then you need to use a different gas constant or translate it into the proper kilograms per mole. Okay so as such uh, the, ma the molar mass of nitrogen gas in kilograms per mole is 0 0.02802 kilograms per mole so that's our denominator. So if we simplify that out and calculate what that ends up being, the URMS <clears throat> for N2 gas is going to be 515 meters per second. So that seems kind of fast, and it is, because that's approximately uh, 1,150 miles per hour. And for those of you who like kilometers per hour, that's about 1.6 times that. So that's almost 2,000 kilometers per hour. So this is very fast. So right now that the, the air that we're breathing is, is whizzing around in the room at about 500 meters per second. So that's very, very fast. But it's because there are so many collisions and because we're always in that type of environment that we don't realize that. But in fact, the gas molecules moving around at room temperature are moving very, very fast.